Okay, this video is going to be somewhat my recommendations, somewhat video response, somewhat pissed off giving my thoughts. Now I've done three videos so far on shovels. One on this one from Mills Fleet Farm. I don't even remember the company that made it. Doesn't matter, they're hard to find. They're cheap. Plain and simple, it's the only way you can describe them. They're cheap. Another one I did here last week. This one for here. Ozark Trails Folding Shovel. Other video I did. East German Military Surplus Shovels. You could say four videos because I did do one of my earliest ones. My second video was on tools and I mentioned, hey, you need to have an e-tool. And I'll tell you guys right off the bat, what shovel do I recommend you get? This bad boy right here. U.S. Military Surplus Metal Trifold. No wooden handle on it to break. We beat the hell out of these. You can use it as a weapon. And they just plain get the hell beat out of them. This one's seen a lot of service over the years. If you haven't seen, I need to clean it up, give it another coat of paint. The only times I've seen these damaged is someone would abuse it to the point where stress the metal out and it would crack down in here. Now, for the average militiaman and that stuff, you crack it down in here, take your shovel to a weld shop, get them to weld it, get them to repair it. If this ever happens, and I think I've only seen it happen once, maybe twice, you bend the blade, take it to a rock, or a side of a vehicle, use another rock, or like we did in the military, a ball-peen hammer, or as we referred to it in mechanized forces, a bald penis. Take your bald penis, start bashing the shit out of this to reform it. And guess what? It'll work just fine. It also helps if every so often you just go through, take a file, Sharpen the edges just a little bit. It cuts into the ground better that way. That's my recommendation What recommendation you get. But be advised, military metal three-fold shovels, you're looking at around $30 now. You're not going to get them for the 10 to 15 like you could even five to eight years ago. Now, when I did the video on the Ozark Trail shovel, I had a couple people post some things in there that kind of ticked me off. Right away I had one person talk about, well that's a cheap piece of junk, you need to go out and get a Glock made folding shovel or some set where you, the blade is separate and you screw the handle into it, something like that. I looked that shovel up, $50. Half of that price is just for the name. And is it gonna be any different than these? Probably not. When you look up who manufactures this stuff, guess what, a lot of this comes from the exact same damn company. They just put a different name on the box. And you see a lot of similarities in the construction, don't you? Now I can point out similarities looking at military surplus and the Ozark trails. Look here, tolerances are about the same. Slightly difference for attachment for the blades, but not by much. Both of them, bolt going across, but this one you can take care of in the field easier because we got a hex bolt on it. This one uses stupid Allen bolt. Both of them have locking nuts. I took this one apart, I checked it. There is the rubber liner in here that that is a lock nut. 
look at the back. Holy crap, look at that. Studs on back. So it's fastened on about the same. Cuts are a little different. The gauge metal on this one's a little bit lighter, but it's not too much different than this. Plus the profile's a little bit different also. Military surplus, you crank it down right onto the plastic knob. This one, you crank it down onto a washer. This one I hit once with paint so far, I'm going to hit it a second time for touch-ups. Now, another person made a comment that this is garbage. He wrecked three of them on the same position. If you're on any position, you're digging, and you wreck an entrenching tool, especially more than one, change the damn location. You're digging in the wrong spot. The ground is too hard. Shift to your left, shift to your right, forward, back, talk to your leadership, find out what you should do. Let them know. If you're digging in ground so damn hard, you're wrecking an entrenching tool, you should be using that and possibly even a pickmatic. Use some common sense. Now the same person that talked about wrecking them said you should go over to Amazon, get a cheap one from over there. Well, the cheap ones at Amazon, you look at it compared to these, guess what, don't look that much different, probably from the same company. Just packaged under a different name. You see a lot of similarities. Even when you look at the construction of these two, there's a lot of similarities. I went through with this one, if you remember from this video, it had a really short bolt through here and it was not even long enough to go all the way into the lock nut. So what I did, actually this last weekend, went by a hardware store, tried to find the right type of bolt to go through here. A machine type bolt where you got the thicker unthreaded part and then a threaded section. I couldn't find one that had a short enough unthreaded section to fit through here. The shortest one I could find with an unthreaded section, the unthreaded section was this long. So it was longer than what I needed. I'd have to put on a ton of spacers in there. So I had no choice. I had to go through, put a uh, fully threaded bolt through there, if you can see. Over time, it'll wear out. Those threads will wear off easily. I am going to go through, maybe dremel these off, and then the whole thing will get spray painted, either green or black. That person also made the comment that, well, if it doesn't have the pick on back, it's not worth having. Well, let's look at the back and military surplus one. Holy shit, there's no pick on back. So does that mean the military surplus one? that the US military carried for about 30 years is useless? Oh my God, it's, I wonder if the military thought about, you know, using a shovel as a pick, you know, maybe that's why they do that. Oh, you think? You think that might work? If I'm pissing you off, if you're gonna leave me as a subscriber, it's up to you, it's free choice. Personally, I think the pick on back is an unneeded feature. It's neat to have. Sometimes it comes in handy. I knew some guys that would get Vietnam era shovels that had the pick on back just so they could use the pick to pry out rocks in their positions. This person also recommended, you know, because I said not everyone can afford a $30 to $60 entrenching tool with self-sharpening edge, pneumatic power drive, 
with ground penetrating radar so that you knew exactly where to plant your shovel. So once again, came back with recommendations for shovels. One of them was a recommendation for a SOG shovel or something like that for $8. Over on Amazon, you want to know how big the blade is for that one? Same as this. Let's see the comparison there. Hmm, which is going to take longer to dig a position? This or this? Huh. The reason I carry this inside my demo kit is so I can use it for putting in anti-personnel mines. And that's the only reason I have something this goddamn small. You're not going to dig a fighting position with no little dinky fucking shovel like this. If you try, you're a moron. Now you can go the route of wood handles. Here's one I have laying around. It's just an old civilian camping shovel. It was made in like Czechoslovakia. I imported a few years ago. Not overly thick on the metal. You know, it's not the greatest in the world, but it'll work. I gotta go through, clean it up, and maybe uh, re-protect the handle. I was messing around with it last year. Now let's look at what can happen to a wood handle shovel. See this one? You might recognize it from uh, the tools video. See something missing? This was a German shovel. Germans always make good, thing, good items. Handle broke off when I put this in the pick mode when I was digging the two person foxhole according to German doctrine. Wood handles do break. What am I going to do with this? I'm probably going to take out that pin in there, give myself a, a decent handle, hickory, ash, oak, something like that, put it in there, drive a uh, bolt through there with a locking nut on it, hold it in place, tighten her up good, and then that'll get issued out to someone. The reason I do the gear videos that I do, when I tell you about stuff like the Ozark Trail shovel, or the East German shovel, or the coffee pots, or the mess kits, I'm letting you know about cheaper stuff that's on the market at the time. For those of you that are looking for stuff, you don't have a lot of money to spend, maybe you can get something. Some items are more expensive. The insulated food carrier pack and the Cambrel beverage dispenser. Yeah, those cost more money. But for individual gear like this, I'm giving you ideas, telling you what's out there for the people that can't afford much. I don't know if I mentioned this in a video or not. A few years ago, I was in a militia movement militia unit we had someone in that unit that was so poor he couldn't even afford a canteen he literally was reusing one pint water bottles as his canteens and he would carry them in his pockets because he didn't even have web gear he wore an old pair of tennis shoes when we trained because he couldn't even afford cheap hiking shoes at China Mart. The weapons he had is what he could afford. And they weren't top of the line. There are people like that in the movement, especially now because of the virus of unspecified origins. People are really tight on cash. There are people that are trying to get gear together. I get contacted on that. They beg me wanting to know what they should get because they never served. So someone like that, they don't have a lot of money. They're trying to get gear together. They may want to get something like this, but all they can afford is something like this.
Are we understanding now? For those of you that are getting hung up on stuff, well, what shovel should I get? I already told you. U.S. Military Surplus Metal Trifold Shovel. It's hell of a lot better than your stupid Glock shovel or any of that crap you're going to get on Amazon. $30. A lot of money for an e-tool. Just a few years ago, I could get an e-tool and a carrier for 20 bucks. Now I can't even get the shovel for that price. Carriers are costing about five to 10 bucks now. And that's for a decent one. I can get some crap ones for less, but they're in pretty sad shape. Usually one of the buttons is broken. You get what you can afford. I've said this time and time again. Have yourself an idea of what your ultimate goal is, what you want to get. But you get what you can afford now to fill that role until you can afford the better stuff. I have been contacted from people thanking me for mentioning that. They went out, they bought a cheap set of LBE. They got what they needed on that piece at a time and that's what they used over and over and over. And then over time, they saved up. They got the better stuff. They got that plate carrier. They got the plates. They got the molly pouches. And then they transitioned over to that when they had enough. And then that older, cheaper gear would get passed off to someone else who didn't have any. I'm starting to get back into NCO mode here. Keep that in mind for future videos coming up. Now, for all my engineer brothers, patriot, militia movements, always remember, SAMs.